In previous videos I've talked about morality and virtue and sin. And many people confuse the two and they also confuse them with purity or impurity. But these, the concept of purity and impurity is something altogether different from both the dimensions of morality and sinfulness or virtuousness. The purity is not so much about whether an action is considered to be fitting within the group or not in the group, as is morality, or whether it will bring you closer to the deity or will you will follow your own guidance or the guidance of the lower powers which inspired you towards sin. Purity is very much about how many things are going on with you at the same time. We are very complex beings. We have many, many chakras. We have many different energies coursing through ourselves and there are more and more energies coming from the media, from society, from spiritual sources, uh, from radiation, technology, diseases. We are inundated in all kinds of influences. So maintaining purity is becoming more and more difficult, more so than maintaining morality or virtue. The maintaining of purity is very easy. If we have only one thing, then we can focus, then we can meditate, and only that one thing can exist. But we are not leading monastic lives anymore. Most of us do not live in a monastery. Our lives do not revolve around prayer or the holy book. We have to live within a society which is at many times overwhelming and confusing and distracting. And purity is very much about the ability to deal with all these distractions, with all these different forces pulling on us. And that a pure person is not by necessity a person who is a selfish person, who ignores society, who ignores his family and his friends. This is a very easy path towards purity, to live a simpler life. But ultimately, purity is about self-control, it's about discipline. To be pure the energy we want to work with has to be unpolluted, unperturbed by all the other things which are happening, which are going on. To be pure means that this one thing is really in the center and we are not looking sideways all the time. So if we are talking about a person who has a, a pure spirit, that usually means that the person is focused on their spirit all the time. And that all the other things which are happening in their lives, because they are human, they need to eat, they need to go to the toilet, um, they have emotions, but all these things do not create impurity because the person knows in a way what is at the center of their lives their spirit and by extension often the higher power to which that spirit wants to relate so a person pure of heart for instance is a person who follows the impulses of the heart chakra to connect to others, to be open to others, to try to seek harmony with others. Doesn't mean that they don't think or that they don't want anything, but rather that what they think and what they want will never take precedence over their hearts. So ultimately it's about consciousness. If a person is able to be conscious of what they want to focus on, 
and their consciousness is not perturbed by the other things which exist within that consciousness. It is not about denial, because if you, for instance, want to be pure in your heart and you are denying that you are envious or that you hate other people or that you are revolted by others, that does not make you pure, because all these things you are repressing just go into your subconsciousness and you are equally impure. Because it just means that you lose control over all these parts of your being by denying their existence. Purity is about allowing things which are important to be important and to maintain their position in the center of your cosmos. So to be pure of heart doesn't mean that I don't get angry if a person cuts me off on the road or takes my parking spot. It means that I acknowledge there is frustration when a person takes my parking spot. I acknowledge that this frustration can lead to anger, but that that anger will never overpower or replace my sense of harmony. So, if I would be an impure person, the anger would move to the center. And I would just say, you bloody asshole, you took my parking spot, couldn't you see I had my indicator on and I was waiting uh, to drive in there. Uh, and I've got the kids in the back and I need to get my groceries. And now I'll have to put my car way over there and it will be very inconvenient for me. In this case, I would lose my love and become completely self-centered, which is a function of anger to make me self-centered. And I may get out of the car and tell this person, what are you doing? Get out of there. This is my spot. And I would act out of a selfish interest. It's this in a way very similar, but also completely different if I maintain a purity of heart. When I have a purity of heart, I am aware of my frustration and the anger it causes me. I am aware of my needs, which have been frustrated. But I will also be aware of the other person. Were they distracted? Are their needs perhaps greater than mine? Maybe I should be more patient, or the exercise would be good for me. Or maybe this person has pain in their leg, and therefore they, it's a torment for them to walk a longer distance from a further war, uh, parking spot. And I would try to open my heart and feel the other person to see what is their need, and what is the need of myself and my family. And then ultimately, it may be that the person is an inattentive person and the most harmonious and loving thing to do is to point out the needs of me and my family which are greater than his or her needs. So I might still get out and tell them, listen, I have my indicator on, I was waiting for this spot, my family is here. I need to get very heavy groceries which I will have to carry from the store over there. My need is great. Could you please allow me to take this place? And then I could be open to hear about their needs or be open to accept that either they may be less in their love and they will just say, well, too bad I got here first or they may answer with, oh gosh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize and move to another spot. And ultimately, the action is not that important. The consciousness is important. And purity is very much about maintaining that consciousness, even if it is challenged. And there are certain things which makes it very difficult to maintain such purity of consciousness. One of them is conflict, because when we're in conflict, our survival instinct awakens, our anger awakens, our frustration awakens, our fear awakens. 
and maintaining purity is very, very difficult, almost impossible, depending upon the intensity of the conflict. Another happier cause is intimacy. This can be physical intimacy, but it can be emotional intimacy, it can be uh, energetic intimacy. But when we are intimate, we open ourselves up, we allow our energies to blend with our environment, with other people, with other beings. And if I'm being intimate, it doesn't matter if I'm being physically intimate or being very intimate with my spirit guide or being very intimate maybe with people who are a thousand miles away and they suffered an earthquake. Ultimately, my energy becomes blended with another energy. And while I may be able to focus and control my energy as I should, I have no such control over energies which are alien to my energy body. So always when I mingle my energy, I enter into a state of impurity. But this state of impurity is not necessarily a bad thing, because if I open my heart to others and feel their energy, feel their needs, I'm also enriched by them, I'm stimulated by it, I gain insight, I gain wisdom, I can gain energy or power even from such interactions. So impurity is not always dysfunctional. But if we are going to do certain things, like go on a trance journey or pray, we won't be very successful if we are impure. It works like a magnet. Our consciousness will either transport our energy towards the power which we are focusing on, or it will attract the blessings which I'm focusing on. So we can either bring our energy to a higher level or invite higher energies to come to our level. But both these actions require purity. If half my energy is doing something else, there's not enough critical mass to create enough attraction to break, you could say, the barrier between our worlds. And the lower the power, the easier it is to break the barrier. And the higher the power, the more difficult it is to break the barrier. So depending on the level of purity, you should also pray or make trance journeys in a way which is appropriate. If I'm trying to contact a being which is extremely high, like uh, an archangel, for instance, I'm not going to be successful if I'm in a relatively impure state, if I'm beset by doubts or troubles. But if I'm in such a state and I would pray to a saint, for instance, that might be manageable, because the saint is at a lower level than the archangel. And with my limited amount of purity, I may be able to reach and to make contact with such a being, and if my impurity is even less, um, for instance, filled, filled with envy or jealousy, then even a saint won't work with me. But there are always powers which are responding to you. So if you're praying in such a state where you're filled with anger and hatred, you will still get a response, but hardly from a saint or from an angel, but from lower spirits which will feed and relate to such energies. And they will also bless you and empower you. But these are not things which will be uplifting for you. They will rather connect you to a lower current in the cosmos and trap you there. So purity is of the essence. And you should not pray or make trance journeys or do other spiritual exercises until your purity is sufficient. Another thing which creates imp impurity is emotional uh, 
uh, perturbation. So if a person is working to process uh, a deep trauma or a loss, or if a woman is going to her menstrual cycle, often this brings to the front very deep emotions and it can be very, very difficult to maintain purity. Fortunately, there are many tools we have which can prepare us, and enhance our purity, so we may at a later stage be able to meditate, to pray, to do trance journeys. One of them is fasting, or if fasting is too heavy, eating sattvic food, which means food which carries very little karma, so that we can actually cleanse our energy channels doing energetic exercises, whether it is in the form of martial arts or yoga or um, shamanic postures or shamanic dances. They can also help to clean out all these things which are polluting, which are creating impurity in us. These can be energies of our current partners, intimate partners, our intimate partners from the past, influences from our environment, from our work, from our families. And ultimately, everything has to go if you are trying to reach a state of purity. And everything has to take a place really at the periphery of our consciousness. We should not repress it, but we should process it into such, onto such a degree that it is no longer blinking emergency lights, deal with me now, emergency, emergency. And once we are in a way able to, in meditation to look at all these things and give them a proper place in our consciousness, then even though we have had a very hard, very difficult period in our lives, even though we have suffered a tremendous loss, we can still attain purity by going through physical cleansing, cleansing the energy intake, isolating ourselves from polluting energies, taking in purifying energies through breathing exercises, to being in a pure environment like a temple or in nature, by taking pure food like fruits and avoiding polluting foods like meat and by exercising the energy body by screaming, by chanting, by crying, by laughing, by doing sports, by doing asanas, by taking different animal postures. All these are methods to restore the flexibility to the energy body, to enhance the size of the aura by which we can process the poisons which are creating this impurity in us. And finally, once these poisons have been processed to a high enough degree, we can go into a state of meditation and look at everything which exists and reorganize our consciousness. And by doing this, we can attain purity. And once we have attained a state of purity, we are able to request help. So first we need to help ourselves as much as we can before we can safely request help from higher powers. We have to do our own part before the gods and goddesses and saints and angels can do their part. So purity is a very important precursor to any spiritual activity and most importantly, to do our spiritual activities in a safe manner. Because if there is impurity in me and I open myself up to the greater cosmos, things will respond. And if I am repressing certain things, then I'm blinded to certain things. Those are weak spots in my energy body and energetic parasites will come to prey upon me. So prayer, is not always safe. Prayer is only safe in a state of purity. Just like trance journeying and other spiritual exercises are only safe once you have attained a state of purity. 
that does not matter ultimately if you have committed a sin or if you have acted immorally. If you are able to attain a state of purity, you will be able to pray regardless of what you have done wrong in even in a spiritual sense or even an offense you have committed towards your deity. So purity is the key you need to unlock the door to the blessings of the higher world.